Hello, everybody. We, I guess we're doing a double dose of horrifically horrifying. Stories. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our story and we're sticking with it. Um, welcome back for a brand new episode of Horrifically Horrifying presented by the Hollywood Critics Association. My name is Heather Wixon, or this week I'm going to be going by Howlin' Heather Wixon. <laughs> and, uh, yes, and uh, I am joined by Kevin Taft from the Edge Media Network. Hello, Kevin. Hello, how are you today? Good, we're going to have to come up with a, uh, a werewolf-themed name for you. Before with a K? We I don't know, right? Carnage, no, that's not a K. <laughs> well, you can Carnage. make it a K. That's true. Yes. Carnage, Kevin, you, but it doesn't. You, you could be like know. Kevin Absolute Carnage Taft or something. <laughs> no, and you I sound, sound like, like a wrestler. I'm a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a werewolf wrestler, best name ever. Perfect, perfect. Love it. <laughs> I think that um, works. You can see that we're doing a new format today, and that's why I screwed up our intro. But you we, know what? We, are, we are so fancy now. <laughs> We finally caught up with the rest of the class. Right? I, I yes. like it though. So. I do too. Yeah. I feel I feel 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 I feel right. I feel right, Kevin. <laughs> You're right. And it's also better quality too, so we don't look all washed out like um bad videotape. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm always gonna look like the girl from the ring, so I'm just I'm That I'm, is not true. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just embracing it. It is what it is, it's all good. Um, but yes, uh, we are so glad to be back this week. Uh, we are going to be talking all sorts of werewolf movies today. Uh, we're going to be opening the show talking about Werewolves Within, which is the brand new horror comedy from Josh Rubin. Uh, it was uh, written by Mishna Wolf, who did the project out of Ubisoft. Um, she has a really fascinating story there. And for those of you who are into werewolf movies or horror comedies, who done it's what have you, um, the film is gonna be coming out in theaters this Friday, June 25th, and then it's gonna be heading to VOD the following week uh, on July 2nd. And I think we have a trailer, Kevin, don't we? We, we do, here we go. Yes. Black night. At its heart, Neath the side. Hi, boys! This is a community. One that agrees about more than it doesn't. <laughs> Put it on your Quonset tree? No such thing. Y'all believe? Like hard work. <laughs> Love. And the moon. Boop, boop, party. Being a good neighbor. I know it's easy to get caught up in the fear of the situation. I know it's easy to point the finger and fear each other. But can we all just take a breath? Please hold off on being enemies. All I'm asking is that you be a good neighbor. Like Mr. Rogers. With guns, though. With guns, yes. Woohoo! Like how we're both watching the trailer too. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like we get to it's, repeat it again. I know. At least we didn't like d double repeat the trailer. I well, it's it. funny because I almost clicked it because I was like, "Do I have to click off of it, guys?" This is brand new for me. I'm not tech savvy, and I was like, "Oh crap! I'm going to start it over again," and she's going to go like, "Oh god!" <laughs> <laughs> but I did not. I, as you can guess, everybody, I am the taskmaster of this show. So Kevin she lives is. in constant fear. So <laughs> I'm, she's, I'm pretty uh, ferocious. She's my tech girl. And <laughs> I'm just I'm not good with it. But well, you know what? Now, now you're I'm the tech guy. I'm kind of excited about it. this. is kind of fun, though. I get to click on things and show pictures. It's not just our faces all the time. I love it. I do, too. <laughs> Um, what I also love is Werewolves Within. <laughs> talk about too. a segue. Yes. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about it. Did you, before you saw this, did you see Scare Me, uh, which is on Shudder? I did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I, I liked, I didn't know if I would like it because I just thought it was such a strange idea for them just to be telling these stories. But I ended up really, really enjoying it. 
I just thought it was clever. It was, uh, yeah, it just was good. It's good. Yeah, in our house, we're big fans of what we call talkies. And those are sort of like the movies that are very dialogue driven, um, that just like they, they just rapid fire come at you. Um, mm -hmm. when we were watching Werewolves Within last night, my other half sort of remarked how this was really fun for him because it was like Radio Land murders with werewolves. Um, <laughs> which I was like, Yes, I totally get it. Because one of our favorite movies is Clue, so which this yeah. also sort of shares some DNA with as well. Um, but yeah, we're a big fan of talkies in this house. So anything that really lays into dialogue, but does it in a way that's very entertaining, uh, yeah. I'm always a huge fan of. And I, Josh Rubin, like with two movies, has like quickly solidified himself as like, you know, he's he's a talented dude. Yeah, for sure. I what I, I like this. It's the same thing. Like I'm, you know, I'm not horror, but I, I'm a big Gilmore's Girls fan. So mm -hmm. um, like that rapid fire dialogue, really clever. And it's funny because sometimes I watch movies and I'm like, I'm enjoying something. But this one, it was like, I just was like, every time somebody was speaking, I was like looking forward to seeing what they were going to say. Like, is it going to be something funny? Is it going to be something clever? Like what, what's going to happen next? And that's what I loved about it because I just never knew what was going to happen, come out of their mouths. And I didn't want it to end either. That was the other thing. And that hasn't happened in a long time where I'm like, no, I want more. You know. Yeah. I think what's really great about this is one, um, watching it the second time, it still delivers because there is so much dialogue. So this, the second time I watched it, I was really able to pick up on like all these little like <laughs> lines that might otherwise seem like throwaway lines, Yeah, but they're actually pretty crucial and they really kind of play into everything. Yeah. Um, and it, that to me is like one of the earmarks of a really great film, regardless of genre is if like, if you can still find things to keep discovering about it, which I think this is one of those movies. And then also what's interesting because it is based on the Ubisoft game, which mm -hmm. is, you know, essentially, you know, characters trying to figure out exactly who of the, of the group is actually a werewolf. Um, and what's interesting to me is that towards the end of this, like I was kind of sitting there the first time and the second time, I both kind of just forgot that we're waiting to figure out who the werewolf is because I was so <laughs> caught up in everything else where I was like, oh yeah, we have to do werewolf things now. Right. Um, and again, that to me is like, you guys really did your job well here because it entertains without needing the genre elements. And it really just like, you know, I, I hate the cliche fires on all cylinders, but the dialogue here really does that because once it, it starts, it just keeps yep. going. And every performance too, like every character was spot on, hilarious. They all were so unique. They had their own voices. Um, I love the lead characters. Um, I don't know where the lead guy is from. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen him before. Or is he? Sam Richardson? Yeah, I've, I don't know what I've seen him before. I didn't have cable, so I never saw him on Veep or anything like that. Oh no, I didn't watch Veep. Okay. Um, I know right now he's on Marvel's Modoc series that's uh, running right now currently. Okay. And I'm looking really quick um, because I know he also does voices on Bojack, but I'm trying to see oh. if there's anything else that I knew. I, for some reason, I felt like I've seen him and I couldn't remember exactly. And I probably should have like, I don't know, research. done this, this research ahead of time. Me too, me too. Um, but of course, yeah, life happens. <laughs> and everything kind of goes awry. Um, we'll come he, back to a picture. Does anybody yes. recognize him? <laughs> well, I will say he was in um, he was in Ghostbusters, the 2016 Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. So uh, he's the cop that's sort of at the at the uh, in the back where, like, when the mannequins go alive and stuff, and like no. Leslie Jones is down there. Um, I believe they have an interaction. Um, okay. He's also a voice on the new series Housebroken. Which is on Fox, okay, and that actually also features Lisa Kudrow because I just got oh. excited. I, I watched Hell's Kitchen, and so I got really excited when they're like new series with Lisa Kudrow, and I was like, I don't care what it is, I, I would like to watch it. But it's animated dogs or animated pets. Oh, I think I've heard of that. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it just yeah. debuted, uh, I think, like two weeks ago. So that's but yeah. Pretty he early was on. he was just so like he was so engaging, and he was so funny. His timing was so good. I just, I loved him. And of course, we, we mentioned this piece. I'm going to screw up her name. So please look it up quick. Um, 
the lead girl was, she's done a ton of stuff. She is an actress, she's a producer, I believe, and she might even be a director. Um, but she's best known, Ma best Milana, known for her age. Yeah, oh, Milana Vaintrib. There it is. She's from the AT&T commercials. We all know and love her from there. Um, and who'd have thought she is just perfection in this movie. She is hilarious. Her timing is spot on. Like, and she is one of those too that she always had those, those little um, kind of asides that you know you pick them up, but you don't really totally remember them. And then you watch it again, like I had, I watched it again as well. And the same thing, like she would just make me giggle because she would just say these things in the background that made me laugh. Yeah, it's so good. It's just so good. Yeah, and they're definitely I a crowd pleaser for so many different age groups will like it. Like I, I don't want people to think like, oh, it's a horror movie about werewolves. Mm, there's werewolf stuff, but it's like Ghostbusters is like a comedy with ghosts. <laughs> yeah, this is this is more like a whodunit comedy that has mm -hmm. werewolves in it. Right, and you're, so. you're, you're spot on with the, it's Clue, has the, the comedy of Clue with werewolves. Yes, yeah, for okay. me when I watched it, it was kind of like somebody like meshed together like Clue, the thing because half the movies I'm sitting around going like, are you the werewolf? Are you the werewolf? <laughs> uh, and then a little bit of silver bullet in there. Yeah. Um, Cause it's sort of small town werewolf problems, which is also a mystery too. Um, we don't, we don't get a lot of oh, werewolf mysteries, but we have two <laughs> and they're both really great. So that works yeah, out for us. That's true. So yeah, I was a really, I, I'm a big fan of like sort of small town stories um, and I feel like if Stephen King were to ever like do a quirky comedy, this would be like sort of in that same vein. <laughs> yeah. Where like you, I could literally see like a, either Stephen King playing a character or just some random Stephen King character kind of walk through this town and just be right. like, "Oh yeah, well that fits totally." <laughs> yeah. So. Well, speaking of, I mean, we could segue because you just brought up a good point about another werewolf movie that we both liked. Yes. About small towns. And that one was called The Wolf of Snow Hollow, which came out probably, is was it about a year ago at this point? Or was it in the fall? It was, it debuted in the fall because it had its premiere at Beyond Fest. Got it. And then uh, I think it fall, It came out like in October, like late October. So um, yeah, I, I, what's really great, I, I love the classics. I love classic werewolf movies, but I also mm -hmm. like, atypical takes on sort of these standard monsters. Like I love off the, you know, off the beaten path, vampire movies, you know, give me weird, give me weird werewolves. You know, your mummy doesn't necessarily have to be a mummy. You know, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> and what I right. loved about like Wolf of Snow Hollow is that that is very much a movie um, that really takes such an atypical route. Again, it's sort of a werewolf whodunit. Yeah. Um, and the reason I, I get for some people the the ending can be a little um, controversial with how it yeah. plays out because it's not yep. what you're expecting. But for me, I loved it. And that was another movie that I watched the first time and I liked it. The second time when you're kind of settled in for that delivery in those characters and just how it kind of comes at you, I loved it so much more the second time. Like for me, yeah. that's when it was like, okay, this is a really great movie. Like yeah. the first time I was and like, then, oh, that was a good movie. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I like the same, similar to Werewolves Within, not as much, but it's definitely a comedy in many aspects, especially the performance of the, you know, our lead. Um, I don't know his name. Jim uh, Cummings. Man. Yes, yes. Jim. You know, I always think that because isn't that the name of the guy who did the Winnie the Pooh voice? Isn't he a uh, Cummings? I feel like I it's Jim Cummings. Know. And so whenever I see that, I'm like, what? <laughs> He's in this movie. <laughs> um, but he, like, hilarious. And it's such a weird performance. It is. But that's what I loved about it, because it was so bizarre that he made me, same thing. Like, it was that I was anticipating everything he was going to say. Like, I couldn't wait to hear how he was going to deliver a line, what the scene was going to be like. But he also still plays the dramatic aspect of it, too. So that was that was fun. Real fun. Yeah. But you know, it's you're funny. You're, no, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to mention, also, we also got a really great final performance from Robert Forster in that movie, too. That's which true. The sort of the final scene that they have between his character and Robert Forster, because Robert Forster plays his dad, uh, is really bittersweet in a way. Yeah. And yep. but it's really lovely and I'm glad that we have it. 
True. I sat next to him at some Roland Emmerich movie. Mm. It was a premiere. Yeah, now I can't remember what the movie was. It wasn't one of his better ones. But yeah, next to me, Robert Forster was, the, and he had just won an Oscar or something. Because I remember oh, being for like, for Jackie oh my God. Brown? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was about that time. It was a while ago. Would that be like, would that have been Godzilla? Because Jackie no. Brown was 97 and Godzilla was 98. Maybe. What was the one after that? No, maybe it was Godzilla. Yeah, I don't think, the last. The next one I remember after that is the day after tomorrow, but I'm sure there had to be something in there, in between there. Yeah, no, I think it was Godzilla then. Okay. I'm sure it was Roland Emmerich because because he was sitting on the other side. He was with the like he knew the person I was with, so Roland Emmerich was on the other side of us. It was a very strange night. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, a lot of weird people, a lot of famous people around me. But anyway, just just dropping I, all sorts of names over there. I know. I'm trying. I have to have, to have something for God's sakes. I've lived here long enough. <laughs> um, I, I won't um, mention that my my other half shot at Roland Emmerich's house within the last month. So. Um, you did mention it to me before name dropper. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's kind of like six degrees of us in a That's way. That's true. Right. So so Roland we're now Emmerich here. should be thankful for us, is what we're um, saying. I agree. I agree with this. I will say that you know when you were saying um these are like whodunit, but I almost mm -hmm. feel like most werewolf movies are whodunits because they're always like, what is this thing? In fact, and I, I think you were you were iffy on this movie or had a, some issues with this, but um, where wasn't the same thing? Like they weren't quite sure who was killing people and if it was the person that they thought it was. Mm, I did not see where. Oh, you didn't see where? Okay. No. Um, I did enjoy it. It was, it was not quite what I expected it to be, and it did have some thrills to it, which I was you know waiting for. I was hoping for. Um, not, not what I expected, and it took me a long time to see it, but also gotcha. very, so much a whodunit of like, is it this guy, is it not this guy? Yeah, I mean, I guess typically if you're trying to figure out who the werewolf is, but like even like like the original Wolfman, even mm. the Wolfman remake, those were kind of, you know, we know who the werewolf is there. True. So, you know, I, I, but yeah, I do like when you're sort of trying to figure out who it is. Um, yeah. Because they don't really do that with, with vampires very much. No. Like vampires are just there. Like they're there loud and proud, I guess. Right. I mean, Fright Night, you knew it was him the whole time. Yeah. Everybody was just trying to catch up. <laughs> yeah. But even like, I mean, I guess the Underworld movies aren't like that, but that's because they're more action-y. Yeah. So they're just sort of there to just have characters or, you know, creatures clash. I, look, I even have an Underworld picture too. Oh, Although, look at that, does... my, my queen. Why does that not, not look like Kate Beckinsale to me? I don't know who it looks like, but it doesn't look like Kate Beckinsale. I don't know. I, I, feel like it's, I, I feel like it's her. It's enough. I mean, I'm sure it is. It just looks strange to me. Um, yeah, I, you know what the funny thing about Underworld? Not the funny thing, because it's really not funny to anybody but me. Um, I think I don't think I've seen the last one. Oh, OK. I, um, yeah, What's it's, the name I'm, of that one? Uh, Blood Wars. OK. I, no, I didn't see it. OK. I need to catch yeah. up. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Um, I think that was the one that had the female director, and they did some really fantastic like swordplay in it. Mm. Um, and I'm pretty sure I think she directed on like Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. And so the like the action felt really, really well staged in it. Um, also, this is sort of an interesting thing that happened during the junket. But like, if you've ever worked a junket, like you go into these tiny hotel rooms, and there's like a million lights shining on talent that are sitting there for like six hours at a time, you know, maybe they get to get up and run to the bathroom really quick, but they're, you know, it's, it's not a fun thing for them. Right. And so when I was doing the junket for blood wars, like I was so excited. It's Kate Beckinsale, um, previous underworld movies. I don't even think I got her. So I was like so stoked and I got in there. And so we start talking and then she just has this look on her face and I know something's wrong. And she just kind of stares and she's like, hold on a second. And I was like, oh my God, I think she's going to pass out. And she started tilting forward. So I had to grab her hand and like, I'm calling people in to like bring water and stuff. And it was kind of a bummer because I only got to talk to her for like a minute and a half. She was fine. And you know, she, she just needed to cool down. That room was like really hot. And, um, 
I never got to finish my interview with Kate Beckinsale. Oh. And there's been no Underworld movie since, so I've been really sad about that. Oh, um, nice. But she's like one of those that's like super stunning in person. Like every time I see her, I'm just like, oh. like I gasped. <laughs> I did that yeah. to Emily Blunt too, but I gasped when I, like the first time, a few, like a few movies ago, I worked like one of the Underworld uh, red carpets. And like she walked on and I was just like, Oh my God, it was like <laughs> angels started singing. Um, so yeah, so I love Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a huge apologist for the Underworld movies and the Resident Evil movies. Basically, if it's Sony, I'm probably, I, you got about a 75% chance I'm gonna like it. You're their biggest fan. Unless it's Fantasy Island, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I that one. We, we have the unrated version on, my, on our Voodoo and I'm like, I, I'm not even worried about what I'm missing out on that. Yeah, I think I've got. I and now I, I really want to uh, catch up on my Underworlds. I actually liked the third one a lot, the prequel one. Yeah, I love that one just because I, one, it's Patrick Tatopoulos directing, mm -hmm. who had been it's, doing the effects. It's very um, um, it felt very Romeo and Juliet to yes. me, and I just liked how they just took that, just a, a kind of different stories almost genre and mixed it in with it i just i was fascinated because i was like oh kate beckinsale you know it's it's a prequel it's not going to feel the same blah 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 but but then they got was... rona mitra so that way right. when you're watching the trailer just on a glance you're like oh there's kate beckinsale oh wait no <laughs> oh no. no no yeah so which i knew rona i think she had been on alias at that point or something like that i think so because i i didn't know who she was at the time because i had watched yeah yeah, so, sure. which I was fine and gave us a lot more Bill Nye, which is always a good thing. Yep. So, but yeah, I, I like that one a lot too. I think we're going to have to rewatch them all in order. I think it's time. <laughs> I think it's time. Yeah. Oh, it's like every, like every couple of years I have an excuse because there's like a new movie. Yeah. Like the same thing happens with Resident Evil movies. We're getting ready to do the Purge movies. And I'm just like, you know, I haven't had a chance to have a good excuse to watch the Underworld movies, but maybe it's time. Now you do. Now I you do. do. So what else, What other uh, werewolf movies do you uh, are you fond of? Um, like pretty what much. What do you howl like, for, Heather? Do I howl for what is Howl and Heather Wicks and howl for? I mean, if it has werewolves, it's probably a good chance I'm gonna love it. Yeah. So me you know, I mean, it's it's just sort of a law of nature. So yeah. I mean, like in my in my kitchen, I have a poster for Howling Two, and Silver bullets, not howling one, oh. of course, because that would be crazy. No, howling not... two. Your sister is a werewolf, um, which is <laughs> is almost as the how the first howling artwork is almost as good. But um, yeah, like the, how, my love with howling two is just sort of I love how weird and wacky it gets, despite its sort of exploitative ending that sort of is really mean to Sybil, Sybil Danning. Um, I, you know, I don't, I know I saw it. It just has been so long that I don't remember it. Yeah. Director Philip Mora thought it would be great to end the movie with uh, Sybil Danning consistently ripping her top off and like looping the footage for like a minute. And it feels really weird. Yeah. And a little exploitative. You, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, in the 80s, it's hella cool. <laughs> but you know, now it's kind of like, oh, that's that's a little bit in bad taste. It's it's such a weird movie. Um, I mean I love I love the first Howling movies for very different reasons. Um, one, I love it because it scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. The first one um, or the second one? The first one. The first one. Just yeah. like it just felt gritty and like nasty and like it just like especially like the scenes like inside the porno booth like it just felt like oh yeah like the seedy underbelly of la is just hanging out there for all of us to see and you've got pristine d wallace like going through it and guys thinking she's a hooker and you know it was just <laughs> it felt like something you're not supposed to watch as a kid beyond the fact yeah. that it's a scary werewolf movie um and i love the goofy animated werewolf sex in that movie so much still like yeah. I hope if they ever remake the Howling, please don't ever change that scene. <laughs> Just do the same goofy animated transformation sex. Like <laughs> it's it's perfect. Don't change a thing. Um, but yeah, like and it's just it's again, it's one of those movies like you watch anything with Joe Dante, and you always get like these same fantastic character actors in it, 
and they're always playing something different and it's always just a lot of fun to watch mm -hmm. um so i've always really loved the howling and of course like the big debate is because the howling came out the very same year as american werewolf so it's been the constant battle of what which werewolf movie is better, better american werewolf in london or the howling and you know so i think it depends um, on if you like wolf, what do you like, say you know to be really honest in terms of what i think the best werewolf movie is i would say the best is probably american werewolf because i do think uh, that there's something exceptional about the, the dark comedy of that movie, plus the transformation is absolutely the most incredible thing still to this date, 40 years later. Yeah. But for my money, the movie that I probably revisit more is The Howling. Interesting. Um, because I, I, one, I like stand up werewolves a little bit better than dog werewolves. Same, me too. Werewolves. Um, and, <laughs> and I, I like sort of the visceralness of Rob Bottin's. Uh, choices in terms of how he got them to transform, like mm -hmm. that bubbling effect where like everything's pulsating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, instead of just stretching, is kind of a little more guttural for me. Like it just kind of is like, oh Jesus, I don't want that to happen. Like I feel right. like I could deal with the American Werewolf transformation, but when like my skin starts pulsating, I was like, I think I'm out. <laughs> like, I don't think I want to be a werewolf anymore. Um, and there's just some legitimately scary shots in that movie. Mm -hmm. Still, like when there is, there is my, my favorite, and I wanted to find a clip of it. And I don't know if we've talked about this, but there is a moment in that in Howling that makes me bust up every time. And I don't know if it's kind of on purpose, but I just remember probably sitting knowing there Joe Dante, probably with my best friend. And when it happened, like I actually did some dialogue. It's when I don't, somebody's in somebody's office and they're going through files, and then. And, and then the, it's Terry. Is it Terry going through the files? I think so. And then the werewolf just literally like picks it up like this. Like yoink. <laughs> He's like, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> so weird, but it makes me laugh because he, he, it just, it was so, uh, such a human moment and yeah. such a kind of a snarky thing to do. Like, yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> yes, that uh, is. My favorite part. Yeah, that was uh, Robert's. Oh, Picardo playing oh, Eddie Picard. Quist? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Picard, yes. Sorry, mm -hmm. Picardo, Picard. Um, I'm, it actually, it might be Picardo. It might be too. I can always forget. He um, he play, also played the. Um, it is Picardo. It is we Picardo. We just turned him into C Captain Picard from Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah. As, as I said that, I was like, I think I'm talking about Star Trek. Um, <laughs> We're, we are definitely the horror experts, everybody. Right. Uh, he was also in Legend as the uh, Meg, the creepy green thing that pops yeah. up. Robert Picardo. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And show that. Didn't know that for us. many, many years. And I was oh, like, really? what? Yeah. I mean, I probably knew 15 years ago, I probably found out, but that's one of my all time favorite movies. And oh, so I was awesome. like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was a guy who did a lot of stuff with prosthetics uh, early on in his career and then moved away from it, which, you know, I'm, I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be doing it either. True. I true. mean, I've done it once and it was not, it was, uh, it was a lot. And <laughs> I was a little bit of a baby about it because I don't like to stick things in my eyes and they made me put uh, crazy contacts in. Okay. And I was like, I don't want to do it. And they were like, you're doing it. And I was like, oh God, okay. And then I did it and I became a zombie. So nice. Perfect. yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, but yeah, I also think I, in sort of like the American werewolf howling discussion, I think, I think the Landis legacy has made me sour a little bit on it too. Oh, with, um, with John know. Landis. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Just, Are you talking about sun? No, no. Yeah. Um, the deaths in twilight zone. Oh yeah. 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 I just, it's weird. Cause I didn't know about like that stuff until like a few years ago. Oh, really? um, yeah, I really didn't. I had no idea because hmm. I grew up in the Midwest. So it was, I mean, if it was on the news, I was probably too young to have noticed or I wasn't awake because I was real little at that time. Yeah. So yeah, I just didn't really know. And it's just, it's kind of put a weird tinge on it. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's, I still love it. And I still think it's got fantastic performances and that, you know, transformation stuff is absolutely top, top notch and we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have modern special effects without it. 
you know, or at least to the degree that we do. So, yeah, but it is a little weird. So, yeah, but it's one, but it's one we'll bring up later as well. Once we wrap up the episode as well. So, okay. <laughs> yes. More to be discussed. More to be discussed. Yes. Um, let's see. I did watch, well, one of my favorites, and I think we've mentioned this before too, is Bad Moon. Bad Moon Perret. is so fun. I love it. I mean, it's, again, it's not the best movie in the world. It's like definitely a, a C plus B minus movie, but I just really enjoy it. I mean, there's also him being half naked half the time. For me, it's a yeah, plus. Yeah, you know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't <laughs> um, hurt. But like, but like you, you said, like I love stand up werewolves. I love how tall they are. They, they scare the crap out of me. And like that scene, terrified me just he was just standing in the corner of the boys room and yeah. super tall i mean that's literally him lifting him up in the air um but this it's such a good good creature creation it really is i'm trying to remember who worked on that one you'd, you'd think i'd actually read you know know these things because i wrote about them but i was gonna say I, for, the, <laughs> for, the, for the life of me i cannot remember who did the werewolf in bad moon so i'm gonna stall for time as i casually glanced down at my phone while still having a conversation with you kevin um <laughs> but yeah i mean it's it, it's funny because we talked about howling too and there's also for as much as there's the legacy of great werewolves there's also the legacy of terrible um werewolves as well which Howling 2 is sort of like one of your premier, like, terrible werewolf movies ever. Um, it sort of set the bar. And so it's been yeah. up to other movies to sort of hit that bar. Because <laughs> what happened was, is when they were making that movie, Philippe Mora, the director, asked the studio, or, they, or the studio was taking out uh, werewolf suits from loan from, like, one of the major studios, so, like, Fox or something. So they were going to send a crate to Romania or wherever it was that they shot the movie. When they got there, they had basically, I think it was Fox, and I think they basically had suits from one of the Planet of the Apes movies. So what do you do? You can't run like a lab in the middle of this country with limited resources and make werewolf suits from scratch. Like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so there's this line in the movie um, that they, like Christopher Lee worked in where they talk about werewolves going through uh, a monkey phase and that was actually because of the way that the werewolves look in the movie they were trying oh, to like wow. soften it a little bit that's so funny. that's sort of the, yeah so that was sort of a, a, a funny aside from from howling too um and i would even say you know as much as i love silver bullets and has as amazing as it is it's it's got a pretty goofy looking werewolf i think um, yeah, there he is. It's not great. I mean, that's still early in the transformation. True. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, I believe that was Carlo Rimbaldi and I think they had some issues and he was a guy who was a super fantastic, he was super creative, but I don't know he was good at implementation. Mm. Um, and the fact that ET is, came out the way it came out is probably a miracle. <laughs> from from all accounts that I've had from people right. who either worked with him or worked for him, it's kind of a minor miracle that ET came out and became like this huge character yeah. in pop culture. Yeah, because I, I apparently was heading in some pretty crazy directions for a little <laughs> while. So, um, but yeah, it, I think for me, like that's the fun. That's the fun part of it is like you know beyond the fact that I love creatures, but like the werewolves themselves can add a lot to it. Like. Ginger Snaps is a movie that I think gets a lot of crap because of its white werewolf. Oh yeah, I don't have a picture of the white werewolf. That's but okay. Yes, I remember thinking that looked very strange. Like I was intrigued because it was different, but I remember thinking like, hmm, there's her. Like it be could have been. When she's starting to feel herself, but not a transformation. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that was all the director's decision. And it was really? a discussion. Yeah, it was a discussion I had because um, the effects person on that, because that was up in Canada, was uh, Paul Jones, and he's done tons of stuff up there. He's probably the how like the effects house in Toronto, and so like he always like will get comments about the werewolf and Ginger Snaps. But for some reason, John Fawcett, the director, was hell bent on having a white werewolf and a werewolf with as little hair as possible 
which when you're building a werewolf suit is so counterproductive to right. what you want to do because you need to hide the seams yeah. and that kind of stuff. And if you have no hair, how do you hide those seams? So you have to give it something. Um, but I remember he told me a story about when he went in to meet with the Resident Evil team and one of the producers on it was giving him crap about the werewolf. And he was like, I was hired to do a job. I did what I could do. You know, this is, you know, so I think for a long time that was sort of a sticking point for him, but I've actually seen more people become accepting of the white werewolf. Yeah. You know, it's fine. Like it it's was, still, a, yeah. it's still a practical werewolf. And in my mind, that's, that's what, what do you need? Absolutely, absolutely. Which is funny because in Bad Moon, in the director's cut, they add like a horrible transformation. Mm. Um, and it's I've never all, it's, seen the director's cut. It's, there's not much difference, but they do a oh, terrible, okay. like animated, it's just bizarre. It does not look good at all. And the actual theatrical version takes it out. Um, oh, interesting. So, it's better. so the or, theatrical knew it. Or maybe it's vice versa. I think it's, I'm sorry, I think I'm wrong. It's the director's cut took it out. Cause I always oh. watch the director's cut when I watch it and I never see it. And cause somebody brought it up and I'm like, oh, I don't remember that. I mean, I've seen it at some point years ago. So I think I saw it in the theater. Um, yeah, and it, I think they added it cause they wanted some sort of transformation, but it looked bad. I think it was mm -hmm. like animated also. Um, but yeah, so the director's cut takes it out. I guess so it's actually shorter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You never hear of director's cuts being shorter than the actual right? movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when it is, like, you're the... like, hmm, <laughs> what happened here? Yeah. I don't really remember the transformation, but also, admittedly, I don't think I've seen the movie since, like, the year 2000. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so it's been a while. Yeah. So I, I mean, would not call myself a, a bad moon. Fanatic. You know, or just expert. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why, just appealed to me. I remember seeing the ad in the paper because that was back in the day when the papers came out. And I remember seeing, it was a full page ad too, but no reviews, like no quotes or anything. So I was like, oh, but it was playing in a ton of theaters. And I was like, where did this movie come from? But because it was werewolves, I'm like, we're going. And I liked it. It didn't do any money. It didn't make any money, but I liked it. Hey, that's all, that's all that matters. Yeah. Who, who needs money? <laughs> Not us. No. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Did you end up watching Wolves with Jason Momoa? I didn't. I got really caught up in like a bunch of other screeners I had to do. And I was finishing up Tribeca screenings. And so I didn't get a chance. Now who's It's worth the time. <laughs> um, it's worth the time. Um, okay. So I'm going to show. Okay. So, well, hot. <laughs> okay. Cool. That's. Uh, I'm in. There's him as a werewolf. Still slightly turned on, okay. <laughs> I like the abs. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like the- It's the first the werewolf I've seen with abs, unless maybe Teen Wolf counts, Well, TV and this show. Is, yeah, it's similar to like, they all wear clothes. They all have their clothes still kind of on when they're running around. They look like people in werewolf suits. And they all look like that when they transformed. I mean, it's it felt like they were trying to make a werewolf Twilight without kind mm. of like, there's a little slight romance in it, but it's kind of a, like a boy trying to find himself. Um, and he goes and, you know, goes to this town that he's kind of uh, uh, guided to go to, to learn more. And then there's a whole secret about him. But, um, you know, he's a young kid. He's good looking. He meets the good looking girl who runs the bar and uh, has to deal with Jason Moa. There's a little family drama going on in there. I mean, it was entertaining. I will okay. say that. But it felt like very much, we want to do a, like a PG-13. In fact, they kept on saying the F word and just taking it out. Looping. Yeah. Oh, so kind of like, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Kind of, yeah. They were just yeah. like, you knew they said it, but you just didn't hear it, but you saw them say it. I was like, <laughs> just cut away or something. Just go R. <laughs> Yeah, and they did it once. They actually allowed them to say it once. So they cut yeah, two just, out and they allowed one. Just go but, R. Nobody's watching PG-13 werewolf movies. I know, but I think that's what they wanted. They wanted the Twilight stuff or something. So it's very glossy. Okay. But, you know, I was. it was Saturday night. I wasn't bored. Again, that. Mm. <laughs> right? All right. I mean, you can't go. 
No. Uh, Heather needs to go now. <laughs> Do we just leave that up for the rest of the show? We I could. feel like we're good. Okay, better, looking good. Than, better looking than me. We just um, do it on the side like he's our third panelist. That would be amazing. Because he's like joined by Jason Momoa this week, right? <laughs> he doesn't talk, but he just looks good. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever interviewed him? No. Oh my god, it's like a weird magical gravitational pull. <laughs> like, because I interviewed him years ago for that Conan movie. And oh, I, right. yep. and I don't I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I wasn't privy to his you know, involvement on there. So that was like my introduction into being Momo Momoified. Um, and like, I walked in the room and again, it was like one of those things where I like under my breath, I was like, oh my God. And it was just like, he just looks at me and he's like, hey. And he's like the most like, like charisma is just like filling the air. Yeah. And there is literally nothing else in the universe for that four minutes. It was like, I walked out and I was like, I need a fainting couch. Like I was, <laughs> I was having a moment, but he's like, he's so charismatic that I swear to God, like there was no oxygen, oxygen in that room. It was charisma. That's it. Huh. Like, that I don't know how to funny. explain it. So I highly that recommend it. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good times, but yeah, I, um, we, we don't really get a whole lot of uh, in-person junkets anymore. So maybe that'll change. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I usually just review. I don't do a lot of junket stuff because I have my mm. other job. So um, I think the last person I actually interviewed in person was Elijah Wood. And it was like two minutes and then I was out for uh, that grand piano movie that he did. Oh yeah. Movie. I like that movie. Yeah. It was really good. Mm -hmm. um, but I did interview a werewolf. I did interview a werewolf once um, oh. on an old TV show I was on called Just Seen It. Uh, it was on PBS and it was on Hulu for a while. Uh, I interviewed Joe Manganiello, whatever his name oh, is. Oh yeah, Joey Maggs is in our house. Yep, Who's and another... he also very yes, and and I wish I had downloaded it, but I have a picture of me on set interviewing him. And then there's we had a Zoriana Kit was also interviewing, so she was in the middle and he was in a chair. And there was a picture that somebody got of him. And he's just looking at me with a smirk on his face. And I'm looking back with a like, flirty smirk. And I always tell people, I'm like, we were flirting. And Zoriana's in the middle kind of like, <laughs> like, what's happening? I'm like, <laughs> he wants me. Take that, Sofia Vergara. I know. <laughs> right? I'm sure she'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. I actually saw, um, years ago, we used to go to this like local wrestling company called PWG that runs mm -hmm. out of Reseda. And one of the times we were there, uh, a bunch of the True Blood people showed up. So it was like Ryan Quantin and oh, nice. Stephen Moyer and Joey Mags and one okay. other person. That's what we call them. It's just easier. Because um, I, I used to have a really hard last name and everybody butchered it. So I didn't even, you know, so I'd, I'd make it easy on everybody. And it was just like, oh, my God. They were like, just, it was just like, Wow walking right in and it's like this tiny little VFW. So it's not like you're in like Staples Center. You're in like a right. room of 200 sweaty wrestling nerds. <laughs> and it actually got like really, really hot in there to the point where like I had to go outside because I thought I was gonna pass out. Like I was like, it was like December, but I was like sweaty. And I, I'm like, my hair is disgusting. I am just a mess. And I walk out there and they're literally standing right there where I have to stop before I pass out. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm having this moment right in front of them. Um, and you but did. yeah, I did. And it was it was humiliating. So but I was I remember it was right after Anna Paquin had her twins. Oh. So it was like right towards the end of True Blood. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that yeah, that yeah. You should have passed out and you should have had them catch you. Right, I know. All of them catch you at the same time. Oh, they didn't need to deal with that that night. Um, but yeah, it was just like, oh, look at all these guys like from True Blood going to see wrestling. That's kind of fun. So <laughs> it was just the weirdest random things. Like I think once, like, and I hate her, but like I think once, like Ronda Rousey was there, and just oh, hanging really? out. Yeah, this is like way before she even was in doing wrestling stuff. And it was like, oh, yeah, really? you, that's what I kind of love about Ellie. You just don't know who's going to show up where and when. So every day can be an adventure. Like. It's true. You know, you're just like running down the street to write a target and you're like, oh, there's somebody like a director or something. And I look like shit. So cool. Mm -hmm. I look great. So adventures in LA living. I was shopping at the Virgin Megastore once. Remember the Virgin Megastore? I do. The uh, one at Hollywood and Highland? No. Oh. Okay. Um, they, 
you're probably thinking the same one though. It was at uh, it was um, Crescent Heights, where the oh, okay. sun, where the yeah. the Sunset Five is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was shopping for CD singles, and I was going through them, and some guy was next to me, and I just kind of just glanced up, and it was George Michael looking at his own CDs. <laughs> it's very weird. Like I literally was like. <gasps> <laughs> did, did he buy them or was he just looking to make sure that they had them or I was he, he was assessing if they didn't to his, Yeah, I feel like he was just looking to see what they had. Like, okay. oh, yeah. Because he was whispering something to his, uh, you know, business manager or whoever. Was it was a there. careless whisper? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> could have been. Could have been. But I'm bumped. I know. For the for all you youngins out there, they're like, what are they talking about? <laughs> What's happening right now? I don't understand. What, what, the, what do they mean by careless whisper? It's one of the greatest pop ballads of the '80s, mm -hmm. children. It's okay. Um, wait. So what? It, what else do we? Uh, we can wrap it up, but we you know we didn't. We didn't talk about. Mm. We don't. We always mention it. So it's not a big deal. But for the first, I mean, I, you know, we talked about this. You and I talked about this, but I had not seen the remake of The Wolfman since the theaters. And then you just suggested I watch the unrated director's cut, mm -hmm. which I did. And I remember, okay, so I love The Wolfman. I love the original. Um, I love werewolves. And again, though, because I like the stand-up ones, not the ones wearing, you know, ripped clothing. When I saw it, I was like, man, it was a little too CGI for me a little bit. It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But it was weird because when I watched it this time, I'm like, what were you thinking? Like, this is everything that you like. It's gothic. It's but did you watch dramatic. the director's cut? I did. That's probably why. And it, it just like it had a different feel. Like I loved loved it the second yeah. time. So I actually have it on order. I'm gonna. I'm trying to. I mean, it's like a buck somewhere, like for used. But um, I really liked it. I I don't don't know if I loved Benicio del Toro. Um, I just don't know if he's. There's just something. He's a little too subdued for the role, almost. Yeah, he's and a little as, too as, moody. He was like an actor, and I'm like, well, you didn't seem like an actor. You seems like you seem seem like a moody man. Yeah. Um, but you know, even that, you know, it, it is kind of like the Wolfman type setup. But I still liked it. I'm curious to, to see how they're going to do it if if they're still going to do the Ryan Gosling version. Yeah, I don't really know. And to be honest, I don't. I mean, I like Ryan Gosling, but like. Do I see him as a wolf man? Like he to me, he has sort of the Benicio del Toro problem where uh, he's unless he has you know what I mean? Like he's very understated unless he has the right material, unless he's doing the nice guys. Do you True. know what I mean? I just yeah. I don't know. Like there's there's just something I don't connect with him a whole lot on because I don't I don't feel like he's like always like I just feel like he's not always engaged here comes all of our dislikes like all the the Ryan Gosling out there are gonna be like thumbs down um <laughs> but yeah like I think he's really talented when he's got like the right material to engage with um but I mean I guess I didn't see La La Land so what do I know oh uh, yeah I mean the thing is I know what you're saying and I felt like he got he almost got stuck in that um the drive uh, mode Nicholas right riding ref mode because Drive, he had that, that, and I, Drive is one of my all-time favorites, but I understand why people wouldn't like his performance and would think it's weird. And I just kind of accepted it for that movie, but then when he did Only God Forgives or whatever it was, then I was like, wait, you're doing the same thing again. And it's all like, I'm not gonna speak and I'm going to do weird things. And I was like, okay, now you gotta stop. And then I think he did a movie after that where I felt like he's trying to get out of it, but he's almost, he's just stuck in it. But La La like, Land, he did I would even, I would even say like something like the Notebook. It's like where he's like, like Rachel McAdams does a lot of the heavy lifting yeah. in those flashback scenes, um, because it's really like he's in love with her, obviously. But it's like she feels like she's the one, like her character is doing all the emotional labor throughout most of that. Yeah, where like he still feels like there's a part of him that isn't fully there. But maybe you know, I could be nitpicking. It's you know, it's a freaking romance movie, but. <laughs> you know, we're just we're just there to see them, you know, move into the house together and have a happy ever after. Um, so I shouldn't be too nitpicky. But yeah, I mean, I like him a lot. Like, I think he's yeah. I think he's a good actor, but I just haven't seen him other than like the nice guys really find that thing that like makes him bust out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, maybe this would be it. But yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, Benicio del Toro is like one of the best actors of, you know, that generation. 
And yet I still don't think he was the right choice for the wolf man. Yeah, no, I feel like he was just, they were, he was on the rise at that time and they're like, let's put him in. Um, but yeah, I, there's something about him that just didn't, I just didn't feel the romance between him and Emily Blunt. But again, and, how, and like, how much do you have to be able to mess up, like not being able to have a romance with Emily Blunt? Right. Like she even right. like in a movie that doesn't even have romance, like her and Tom Ka like Cruz's like chemistry in um, I did tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Slash live die repeat. Yeah. Um, is so fantastic. Yep. You know, and he's sometimes he can be in movies where he just doesn't click with people, and he they're yep. so good in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those like at least I know Anthony Hopkins looked like he was having a lot of fun yeah. in that movie. Like he was the one person in that whole movie that really felt at home, and like they're like, yeah, I know exactly what movie I'm in. Yeah. And I wish I wish Benicio had known it too, but I still yeah. love it. I thought it was the director's cut to me was like one of the biggest surprises for me last year. Just yeah. going back and revisiting that and being completely shocked at how much I liked it. What was the other one you told me to watch that has a director's cut that has a different like death scene or something? And I was I was like, I'm not convinced, but I'm gonna watch it. What was it? Oh gosh. Cause you said, Oh, Amityville Horror, the remake. Yeah, yes. I have not watched it yet, but I will I, I was think I was looking for it. I couldn't find it, but I'll find it. Yes. So, I think you get a little more Ryan Reynolds abs too. Oh, that's nothing, nothing wrong with that. It's a bonus. It's a bonus. Bonus for sure. Yes. Um, I guess we do also have to talk about Cinema Week. Yes. Very so, exciting. Yes. Yeah, so there is something, um, and I'm going to have to read my notes, guys. So forgive me for that. Um, so there's something that's uh, called Cinema Week that uh, is starting, I would say, this week. Um, and I have to find it. Um, so go to cinema, cinema-week.com um, to check it out. It's, it's celebrating all things cinema this week. So we want to kind of join in on the festivities. So um, in celebration, we're going to Hollywood, Crit Hollywood Critics Association is going to be giving away t-shirts and hats every day. Um, for those of you who answer questions um, in one of our shows, and of course the show is Wednesday, and it's horrifically horrifying. So we are going to ask you a uh, horror related question and you need to answer it on Twitter and or Instagram. And then at the end of the day, we will pick a winner uh, and send you stuff. And also if you go to cinemaweek.com, also um, there they have exclusive mer merchandise and stuff, sign things. So go there and you know peruse the site, see the special things that they have going on this week. Um, but for us, do you wanna give the question? Heather, do you remember the question that I told you? You 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 said you had a handle on this. Okay, so I'll do I didn't. Uh, no, I can okay. pull it I was up right on now. The spot. No, I was putting it on the spot. Okay, the question is: What was the first horror film you saw in the movie theaters? So answer. Okay, not below. Answer on Twitter or Instagram. And I we we could end this by saying, Hey, Heather. What was the first movie you saw in a movie theater? Horror movie you saw in a movie theater. Yes. Uh, so it actually works out perfectly that my first horror movie that I remember seeing in theaters uh, was actually An American Werewolf in London. Wow. Yes. Uh, I was three years old. <laughs> it was It was such a, it was, 80s were such a wonderful time to, to grow up, guys. You just have no idea. Um, but like back then, you know, I was being raised by a single mom. Babysitters were expensive. And I was actually a pretty good kid. Um, so she could just take me to movies and I didn't really cry. I didn't really fuss. I don't even think I had to even usually get up to go to the bathroom or anything. So I was like the perfect, I am the perfect movie buddy is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm well behaved. I do, you know, I sit in my seat. I don't get up and once the movie is done, we're good. Um, so I've always been the perfect movie buddy, but yeah, I remember it was my mom, myself and my mom's best friend who, uh, became sort of like, uh, my auntie over the years. And I just, the, the only thing I can really remember about it was that sitting in there and there's the scene in the movie where they're in the, the triple X movie theater. Yeah. Um, not that I knew what the triple X movie theater was when I was a kid, but I knew that I was inside a movie theater watching a movie theater. And that was kind of weird. Like mm. I actually thought like the, the ghoul, like the dead people talking were actually in our theater. And uh -huh. I remember that was kind of weird. 
Um, and then I remember my aunt who's like, she's just not a horror movie person whatsoever. And so she says to my mom, she's like, oh, I think Heather's getting really scared. So I'm gonna take her to the lobby, which I, I, I had no a way of being scared. And so I just remember playing Pac-Man with her a bunch while we were waiting yeah. for the movie to finish for my mom to come out. Um, so that was like my first horror movie uh, memory. Interesting. I yes. was terrified of horror movies. I wouldn't go. My friends wanted to do a double feature of Star Trek Two, which I didn't watch Star Trek, so I didn't really care. Um, and Poltergeist. Mm. And I, even though Poltergeist is PG and now is one of my all-time favorite movies, um, I would not go. I was terrified. Um, <laughs> and I don't even remember. Like I finally saw it on, on videotape. So the first one that I remember seeing at the theater theater was Friday the Thirteenth Part Four. Um, with Corey Feldman, that one, and Crispin Glover doing his weird dance. Um, nice. And I, it did terrify me because, like, I think my parents were away, so like, me and some of my friends watched, I think, one of the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. We went. To, I think I watched one with my dad or something on like regular TV, so it was cut up. But it still, again, terrified me. Um, but then my friends were like, "Let's go see the new one." And it was at the 99 cent theater and it was part four. But I remember going home, my parents were not home. When they all left, I was terrified. Because I was oh my gosh. and I was like, he's gonna get me, he's outside. Did you, did you go up to the bathroom and start shaving your head right away? Just to be sure. <laughs> I didn't, but I think what I used to do when they weren't home, even I think in college, I would go into our den. So we had two floors, very small house, but I would go to the den and I would close both doors and I would put stuff in front of the door so I could sleep on the couch and nothing could get in. Just oh, in case. Good call. Even, even in college, I think I did that. I don't know what it was at that house. I mean, it wasn't long. <laughs> well, it might have been haunted. There was a couple weird things happened to me in that house, but <laughs> another time. When we do ghost movies, we'll talk about that. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk about Kevin's real life haunting experiences. <laughs> oh, dear God. All right, well, um, I guess that's the end of it, huh? I think that's the end of the show. So yeah, make sure you guys are participating in Cinema Week. Uh, you can check it out uh, on the other shows that we are doing this week as well. They're gonna have their own questions. Yes. So make sure you tune in and check out those and that increases your odds for winning cool stuff, which is always a good thing. Yep. So with that, bye, Heather. I, uh, bye. <laughs> See you guys next time. Uh, and don't forget, uh, Werewolves Within hits theaters this Friday, um, courtesy of IFC. And if you are still a little nervous about going to theaters, totally cool. It's going to be on VOD next week. Perfect for just in time for 4th of July. If you want to beat mm -hmm. the heat and stay home and watch movies, uh, you you definitely will have a good time with that one. Yeah, you will love it. It's awesome. Yeah. So, All right. Till next time, everybody. See right, ya. Bye, guys. Bye.